on. Okay, so that means get on share screen, right? Wait, got, got it. Is the screen shareable? It should be. Um, let me just double check. Oh, yep, there we go. Okay. All that thing's in the way. Participants can now see. Okay. From the beginning. So I chill from the be ah, there we go. <clears throat> okay, good afternoon, everybody, and good morning to uh Bernie. Um I hope this presentation on our Lincoln Cemetery indexing project will be helpful to you. My goal was to make it as clear and straightforward as I could. Um, so this is a kindred spirit, GWG volunteer effort for soul or saving our um, ancestors legacy. What, oh, wait a minute. Oh boy. Okay, um, what is indexing? For our purpose, indexing is simply taking specific information from documents or records and typing it into an online form. What will you index? You will use primary source documents that will be sent to you to type in information, which will create a memorial page for people buried in the Lincoln Cemetery in Pembroke, Dauphin County, PA. So, these are examples of the records that will be sent to you to use in creating your memorial pages. These are primary sources, which means they are the original documents. Whoops, I'm sorry. How can I turn that on? Sorry, guys. Go away. Okay, these are examples of records that will be sent to you to use in creating memorial pages. These are primary sources, which means they are original documents which were created at the time of the person's death by officials whose job it was to document accurate information. Now, as you can see, they're handwritten and that can be a little challenging. So just do the best that you can. Um, the, you will use these to create the basic memorial. Um, to type in the name, date and location of death and the cemetery plot location when that's available. These three records are in a folder named Carpenter Joan. Each folder you receive will be lab labeled with the name of the person whose records are inside. The number and type of records in each folder will vary, except that all folders should have an index card similar to this one. Now, this is what a typical memorial page looks like. You will use the information from the records you receive to type in the name, date, and location of death and the cemetery plot number in a form on findagrave.com, which will create a page that looks similar to this memorial page. Now, some memorial pages have less information and some have more. Some have death certificates, newspaper obits, and death notices, and even photos. Expect to see some of these annoying advertisements on the page as well. This is the site where you will begin indexing for each person on your list. Make sure it is the Lincoln Cemetery in Penbrook. I bookmark it or put it in my favorites so that it's easier to access every time I'm ready to work on my indexing project. Okay, so that's it. That's the job in a nutshell, as the saying goes. Um, going on to the Lincoln Cemetery, find a grave site, typing in information from um, the records to create a memorial page. Now let's look at this process more closely and we'll start by looking at the contents of the folders similar to those that you will receive. So this, Sorry. So this folder is named Eldridge Senior William T. It contains four documents. The first one is the index card. Under that is the cemetery company record. 
Now, after carefully reading the two records on the right, you will find that it, they happen to be you will find that they happen to be duplicates of the same Lincoln Cemetery record. There are thousands of records in the Lincoln Cemetery collection. They were scanned one at a time, which leaves room for human error. I just wanted you to be aware that occasionally you may find such an error. It's no problem. Get the information from one of the records and then just ignore the other ones and keep on working. This is the contents of the folder of Molly Allen. It contains just two documents, but they have all the information that you will need to create the memorial as indicated by the red circles. So now let's look at these documents up close. This record is one of the two in Molly Allen's folder. All folders should have an index card with similar information. This one and most of the index cards have the first and last name, an unspecified date, a permit number, and a cemetery plot number. There's other information, but it varies from one index card to the next, and you'll probably not need that information to create your memorial. Although there is a date and name on this index card, it is important to read all of the records in the folder before typing in information to create the memorial page. And I'll show you why with the other records in Molly's folder. So this is the second record in her folder. It is a cemetery company record and it has her name, um, the date of, and location of her death, and a couple of dates. Now remember, you will need to record Molly's name, her date, and location of her death, and the cemetery plot number. In this case, the names on both the index card and this one are the same, but that's not always the case. So you have to read all the records. So now let's look at the date and location of her death. The index card had the date 63054 written on it. The cemetery record has a different date. That record reads date of death, 62654. Since the date is specifically identified as the date of death, then we know that it is the accurate date and the date that we should type into the record on find a grave. So even though there's a date on the index card in her folder, it may or it may not be the date of death. In this case, it was not. My guess is that it was probably the burial date. And we don't want that. We want the death date. So that's one reason for reading all of the records before typing. It gives you the best chance of putting in accurate information. And of course, that's absolutely what we want to do. So the index card didn't give us the location of death, but the cemetery company record does. So we copy that from there. Whereas the index card had the cemetery plot number up here in the corner. So you'll take that information from the index card. So now we have all of the information that we need. Looking at the records together, as you will when you open a folder, remember to examine each to get the information you need before you start typing. The four pieces of information you will type in are circled above. Take note again that the date on the index card and company card differ. Remember that the company card is the one that you need to use because it specifies the date as date of death. Also compare the names to be sure you have the full name and the correct name. The place of day, death is sometimes an institution, sometimes a city and state. Type what is on the record. Now let's look at one more folder, that of Robert Allen. Robert Allen's folder has three records this index card, and two others. Take a moment now to see if you can answer the first question, the one at the top. So is that his full name? We don't know until we see the other records, which could have a middle name instead of just an initial. Okay, take a look at the question below that one. Is that the correct date of death? Maybe, but it could also be the date of the burial or some other event. 
So we have to read the other records before we know for sure. Is there a cemetery plot number on this card? If you chose the information on the third line down, which says block D, section 24, lot 701, then you're correct. Lincoln Cemetery plot numbers usually have three parts to it like above, but sometimes there are only two parts noted. And also sometimes it may say upper or lower or grave. And just record what you see to provide as much information as you have available. This is another record in the same folder. Please take a moment to read this document to answer the questions on the slide. I'll give you a minute to read that and see if you'll be able to name the deceased person and the other information that we might need for the memorial. Okay, so if you read carefully, you realize that this record is the wife giving permission to the cemetery to open a grave for the internment of the deceased R.P. Allen. Please don't make the mistake of thinking the first name on a document is always the deceased person's name, because like in this case, it's not always the first name on a record. You may also recall that this is not exactly the same name that was on the index card. That name was Robert P. Allen. I'm pointing out this information so that you avoid taking anything for granted. Read the information carefully so it doesn't cause you to make mistakes and enter inaccurate information. The other information on this record you may have noticed is the cemetery plot number. Um, and it's the same as that on the index card, which is helpful since the index card had a question mark behind its plot number. There is a date, but that would be the date the form was signed and not the death date. The third document is another one that you haven't seen before. It was generated by the State Department of Health and is a permit for burial. Now this record holds three pieces of important information for you to index. Can you identify them for yourselves? Okay, your three pieces of important information are the name of the deceased, Robert P. Allen, his date of death, 10-23-61, his place of death, Harrisburg, PA. So again, this is a display of all three folders in Robert Allen's folder. I'm sorry, all three records in Robert Allen's folder. The name is the same on two of the three documents, but the initials used on the other record are in agreement with his name. So we can conclude his name is Robert P. Allen. There are four dates, but only one is specified as the date of death. So we know that's the date we're gonna type in. Only the permit for burial has the place of death. So there's no confusion there. Two records have the cemetery plot number and they are in agreement. However, the index card had a question mark after that number. So it's good that we have this other one to verify. And I have seen on um, findagrave.com a question mark behind a plot number that somebody has put in. So I guess you could do that as a way of saying that you think this is the correct information, it's a starting place and it gives a person something to go on. Okay, so now you've had the overview of the records that you'll be using. Let's take a look at the process of creating the memorial page, the memorial page using the information from those records. You will go to findagrave.com. You will sign in and or uh, um, sorry, or create your account and then sign in. Click on cemeteries once you're there um, up in the menu. When you click on cemeteries, it takes you to a place that you can search and find the cemetery that you need. In this case, it's Lincoln Cemetery in Pembroke. 
Now I mentioned Pembroke again, only because when I put in Harrisburg, Dauphin County, because cemetery is in Harrisburg, I get a message saying no cemetery found. So it's important to put Pembroke for the location on this, of the cemetery. I found that will take me directly to um, Lincoln Cemetery. And here is the Lincoln Cemetery link. You will see a little icon picture of the cemetery and its name and address with Pembroke there. Um, and the name of the cemetery, which is the link that you will click on, click, uh, click on to go to the Lincoln Cemetery page. So this is the page that I told you about before that I bookmark or put in my favorites so that I can go there easily because this is where you're gonna start each time that you're ready to start creating a new memorial. You start by searching the Lincoln Cemetery site to see if the person you're indexing already has a memorial or not. And to do that, you type in the surname right here in the place where it says last name not, don't put in the given names right now, just put in the surname and you will receive, and then click on search cemetery and you will receive one of two messages. You may see a page like this on the left that says there are matching records for that surname, or you may see uh, a page that reads there are no matches for that surname. Now, on both, on both results, you have the option to search further by clicking on Refine Search. And you might choose to do that if there are no matches or none of the matches match your person. Um, that they don't, I'm sorry, I wanna say they don't match your person's given name and date of death. So let's say that you find no matches for your person. In that case, you will have to make a memorial for that person and you do that by clicking on the link that says down here at the bottom on both results, it will, where's that thing? Okay, it will tell you that you can add a memorial. So that's what you're gonna do when you don't find your match. That takes you to the add a memorial page. This form comes up. Type in the information that you have avail available which we're hoping is the name, date of death, location of death, and the cemetery plot. Now, if you have the birth date and location or a maiden name or prefixes and suffixes such as junior, senior, reverend, you can include that information too. You might not always have the cemetery plot number or it may be only one or two parts to it instead of the three that there should be. Index what you have. Part of it is better than none of it. Once you have typed in all the pertinent information you have, press down at the bottom, add, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> press add memorial to save the information and create the memorial page. <clears throat> so we created a new memorial page because the person that we needed to index didn't have one. But what if there are matches and after comparing the given name and the date of death, you determine that your person's name is there. In this case, click on his or her name, like on this page, wait, where is that page? Here, you would click on that person's name if that was your match. And their memorial page will come up. Now, using the information from your records, compare it to the information on that memorial page. If it matches your information, check to see if you have any additional information, like maybe the, the, uh, the where is this? This one doesn't have it. So you could add in the cemetery plot number. If you have neither corrections nor additions, then you're finished with that person and you can move on to your next person to be indexed. But if it doesn't match, or if you have additional information, click on Suggest Edits. It will take you to this form, which is populated with the information that's currently on the memorial page. 
type in the information that you think needs to be changed or add it, just like you did when you added a new memorial. On the bottom part of the form is where we, you would add the cemetery plot number if it's not there or if you need to change it. After suggesting an edit, click on Save Suggested. So save suggestions. And after you suggest this edit, at some point you should receive an email from the owner of that site telling you whether or not your suggestion was accepted. So these are some of the other kinds of documents that you may have, you may find in a folder that you are working with. You can see that some of them will not give you the information that you need in creating your memorial page such as this envelope, which I believe was used to send a check to cover burial costs, or the note from the undertaker. And down here is what's called a partial production count card. And I don't know what that is, but it has some kind of information on it. And I thought it was kind of interesting. So it would um, bear reading. Anyway, that's the only way you're gonna know if it contains information that you can use. Now in the corner is a hand-drawn cemetery map, which may be helpful for Seoul in their work in the cemetery. So if after reading a document, any of these documents, you find that that document does not contain information you can report, record, then you should just leave it in your folder. Please do not delete any records from the folder. Just leave all as you found it. If there happens to be a newspaper article or a death notice or obituary in one of the folders, you may upload that to the memorial by pressing on the photo button. Get back to that page right here on the memorial page. It says add um, photos. And if you follow the directions, then you will be able to upload um, that information. Some memorial pages have death certificates on them. The death certificates can often be found on Ancestry.com. And if you wish to find them and upload them for the people you index, that would be great. But that is strictly voluntary and it's unnecessary for our purposes. Creating a basic memorial page is what we are being asked to do. Okay, I think that's it for me. Does anyone have questions about how and what? to index. Okay, so now I want to stop share. There we go. Okay. Okay. Now before before you ask questions, let me just show you something quickly because that you may include that in your questions for Charlotte and Rachel as well. So let me go into share. And here's my little three page PowerPoint. So you will each receive an email from me. You're going to receive this email individually because it will have a unique link. So this just lets you know that I've created a folder for you called resources. And then there's another folder that will be your personal folder that will have your records in it. And then there are certain steps you need to follow when you get that information. Okay. So when you click on the resources folder, you will be inside of a folder that says step one, step two, step three, and so forth. So step one is either review the PowerPoint presentation or look at the video. If you need to review anything that Charlotte just covered with you, because that's a lot. Uh, step two says print this page. And here's what the page looks like. The page actually is your worksheet. And I put two worksheets on a single sheet of paper, one at the top, one at the bottom. So 
when you're working on looking at the resources for each individual person, you will be able to write the information as you find it, handwrite it, because you will print out this worksheet and then you will write the person's last name, their first name, their middle name or initial, if they have a suffix, or if you find their maiden name listed. You'll be able to check off what you're looking at. Are you looking at an index card? Are you looking at a vital statistics permit? Are you looking at an obituary? Whatever it is. Some of this stuff you don't need for indexing. This is just to help you organize and get your thoughts together before you ever touch find a grave. Okay? As you go through your individual records, this is what they're going to look like. So when you click on your folders button, you will be inside a folder that I will give your name to and only you will have access to. Um, I shouldn't say only you because Charlotte and um, Rachel and I will have access as well. But you will be able to look at the source record for that person, like Charlotte just explained to you, and then there are little right arrows or left arrows on the screen where you're looking at these sources. And they will allow you to scroll through the records. So if this person has two records, you can scroll between record number one and record number two by going either right or left. If they have three, you can scroll to the third and back and forth until you write down all the information. Notice there's also a plus or minus button that you can click that the image bigger so that you can see it better. Okay. Then after you have all of the people in your folder uh, written on your notes page, that's when you can then go into Find a Grave and start updating information. And in this case, I had a person that I happened to know. And there's some people in this room now who happen to know this person because he is actually an ancestor for several people in GWG. But because I know who that is, I had his photograph. So in addition to putting his plot number, I was able to also add his personal photograph as well. So it's only at that point that you are going in to find a grave. You've already done steps one through three. Now on step four, you go in to find a grave. So you can do your entire folder first up to step three before you ever feel like you need to go in to find a grave. And then step four, um, Rachel had suggested this when we talked before about having you um, leave flowers. And we can talk about that a little more with Rachel when I get through this little PowerPoint. But I thought if you're going to leave flowers, it would be a good idea for us all to leave the same flower. So there is one called Forget Me Not. In fact, there are two called Forget Me Nots. But the second one is a, a little cleaner. It's, it's uh, anyway, it's a better representation of the actual flower. So if you choose the second Forget Me Not and then type into the little notation window, Kindred Spirits GWG, and it lets your name come up with it, then that will actually be left behind on the person's memorial page. Finally, when you're done, you have to let us know that you are finished. So since Charlotte is the lead on this project, her email address is there, and you're also sending to me um, so that if I see your feedback before she does, one of us can respond. If she sees it before I do, you know, we can respond. And you will let us know how you completed those records. 
Were you able to go in and complete this person? Did you go into the memorial and find that someone else had already completed it? Or were you unable to read the source data that was there and so no, you couldn't complete it at all? And then in that third column, you give us the date that you actually put it into find a grave. So listen, here's another thing I wanna tell you. If you get to the point where you are uncomfortable going into find a grave by yourself, do up to step three for all of your people and then email me and say, I'm scared. I need to have you look over my shoulder while I go in to find a grave and you know what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna send you a Zoom link and we'll Zoom and I'll watch you put your first two people in and then I'm gonna say, now you're on your own, see ya. But at least you know that you have a backup. You don't have to try this by yourself the first time. But when you're finished with those six people that you're given in your folder and everybody will only be given six to start out, then you let Charlotte and I know that you have completed those six and you want to continue, you want a new folder. Or I did six and I am done, 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 stick a fork in me, I'm done, okay? Inside your folder, here's what it looks like. And Charlotte just showed you this in her PowerPoint. So when you click on your personal folder, you will see those six people listed. When you double click on a name, it will then bring up the records for that person. Then you click on the first record and it will bring up a screen. And again, this is a screen I showed you before where you can scroll to the next record for this person. You can make it bigger, smaller, whatever you need to do and then move to the next record for this person. And the whole time, what are you doing? You're writing this information onto the worksheet that you've printed out. And you only need the top half of your sheet for this person. And then you need the bottom half of your sheet for your second person. And then you need the top of the second sheet for the third person and so forth. If you print three sheets, you have enough worksheets for this folder of six people, okay? See, I told you three slides. All right, now I'm gonna stop sharing. And now we can see everybody in the room and let's have you ask questions and Charlotte and Rachel, and I will try to answer your questions for you. Oh, well, before they even ask a question, I um, looked mm -hmm. at the chat and saw that Rachel had uh, added some information to the presentation. Just, uh, let's see, on the Robert Allen um, record, I think you said there was a date, his uh, birth date. Maybe that was it, Rachel. And they then- his Sorry, age, his age. Oh, oh his, his age. age on it. I didn't notice that. Yeah, I should pull that up again. And then you said something about, I guess if you put that age in, then it will populate a date or something. Yeah, so you don't have to do the math of estimating how, you know, what year somebody was born. You can just click like this. It says, is there an age on the headstone? I think it says, but you can just use that and put in the age. And okay. it does the opposite too. If you just put the, if you have a birth year and a death year, it'll calculate the age for you too. So. Great. Okay. I have a question. question. Um, and I apologize if you already answered this. Um, is, are there also photographs of the graves in some of these folders or is that a process that will come after the indexing of all of this like documentation? Rachel? I do not believe there's any photographs of graves in the folders. Um, oh, no, not in the folders. Not in the folders, but if there is a memorial, someone may have already posted a picture. And sometimes it's Rachel that posted the picture of the grave. But that is if you are starting 
if you do your notes from the documentation that you're given, and then when you go in like uh, Charlotte showed you and search for that name, and then you find that they already have a memorial, you may find that Rachel has already posted a picture of the grave. You may find their name is listed there, but only with, um, maybe they don't have a middle initial and maybe you found one in your note taking, then because it already exists, you're gonna click on that suggest edits button. And then you put in the middle initial that you found. You put in a birth date that you may be found. You put in the plot number, which may not be there. Most likely not Most there. <laughs> Okay, because that's really why we're doing this. And remember, guys, you are helping uh, descendants of these people who passed, who when they go to find a grave, they may only in some cases see a headstone. Now they're seeing more information that you're able to provide from the indexing that you're doing. I guess Other sort of questions? a follow-up question to that. If we see that there isn't a headstone, is it inappropriate for us to go to the cemetery to try to find that and add that? I know that's like way more than what you're asking us to do for the sake of indexing, um, but I guess just as an extra step, is that something that we can do or would that, should we not do that? I Just the ethics of that, I suppose, is my question. Rage? <laughs> um, everyone is always allowed come to the cemetery <laughs> and encourage that, right? Um, it helps it to not be forgotten. Mm -hmm. uh, most likely, so, you know, we, what I do when I'm in the cemetery is I pull up headstones that have sunk it into the ground. So a lot of times when there aren't, there's not a headstone photo, it's because the headstone is not visible. So, you know, you might be able to find the headstone, but you might not. And I don't recommend that anyone else try pulling them up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. I would never, I would never do. <laughs> That's a little too much for, for me, but yeah, thank you. I appreciate that, Rachel. Bernie. Uh, question, okay, so in, in the presentation, thank you so much, Charlotte, that was great. Um, I noticed place of death one one point said Harrisburg Hospital. Do we then interpret that as Harrisburg? Do we put hospital? Or do we put Harrisburg, Dolphin County, Pennsylvania? If I find a if I find like Polyclinic Hospital, which is obviously in Harrisburg, do I put Polyclinic or I put Death Place, Harrisburg, Dolphin County, Pennsylvania? It won't allow you to put in like Polyclinic. It will okay. only allow you to do a place name. So okay. So did everybody get that? So even though it says Harrisburg Hospital, use the place name, Harrisburg, Dolphin, Pennsylvania. It, it'll start to come up as you okay. type it in. Okay. With that point, I remember one that I was indexing and it was a, a sanatorium and I really wasn't sure where that was located. So I, I Googled that to find out where it was located. Cause yeah, I forgot that they don't allow you to put the name of a place, just the, the map location, I guess you would say. Was so, it Mont Alto? Yeah, mm -hmm. that's where it was. Right. Yeah, that was sad. The girl was so young who died. And that was a big tuberculosis outbreak. So you're gonna find yes. in a lot of folders, there are a lot of kids listed. Mm -hmm. And you're going to find that. I would say if you find something like that and you want to add it, that there's a note section. So any information that strikes you as being important or that other people would find interesting or even if there's a discrepancy and you're not sure, you can also add that to the note. You can add that, type it into the note section. I have another question. And in, in looking at find a grave, <clears throat> and I don't know if we do this or not, on some of the sites, you'll see an obituary. You'll see, you know, information, son of, yada, yada, yada. Is that a part of this plan as well, if we find that? or 
If you find it, you can list it. As Rachel said, there is a notes component um, for some memorials that already exist. Um, I found some errors in the notes. Um, and if Aunt Laura is still here, um, this this will help her because um, one of them was her Aunt Arrow who um, raised her mother. But so in the notes section, it actually said that her mother was, um, her mother and father were the parents of three children and it listed the three children. Well, they were the parents of four children and Aunt Laura is the fourth, so she wasn't mentioned. So I made a suggestion to the manager of that memorial to please add my Aunt Laura. Well, there was another error I found and that was that he had listed that Aunt Laura's mother was buried in that cemetery and she was not. Her Aunt Era was in that cemetery, but her mother is at William Howard Day. Okay. So Aunt Laura, you will be glad to know that he said, it's just easier that I delete this person because I have wrong information. I have two so, other questions. Yeah, he deleted that person, but then I went back and sent a note to the other person that listed information about her on arrow and I updated them. If they choose to suggest that edit, they can. They, they may decide not to add that. Okay. Thank how, you, Sharon. How You're open, welcome. How open are these editors to to changes? I mean, do we because we're a part of the Lincoln project, does that give us, you know, I, I mean how are open, open are they? And they have asked me for names of people who are participating okay. so they know that they're not being spoofed. Yes, there you go. And my last question, my last comment is, this is great. Thank you so much. Where did you get these cards, this information? <laughs> and two, is that available? Do other, you know, cemeteries, because I look at cemeteries, you know, old African-American cemeteries, are those also available? Are they at the churches? I mean, this this is a gold mine. Where do you find these cards? <laughs> Yeah, I, I right away when I started with um, the restoration of Lincoln Cemetery, I guess I hadn't even really quite started yet, but that was what, you know, I was about because these records are so often, you know, destroyed or lost and you don't know where they are and or they're in a church, they're in a church and you, you know, you might not know like where, where they are, what if the church closes you know, so on and so forth. With these records, they're held by Wesley Union Church. Um, they pretty much, they, they they burned twice. So the records were destroyed twice in the 1800s and then the early 1900s. So a lot of, um, a lot of information is missing because they tried to recreate, you know, the records later on. Um, but that is where they are. And uh, I would, recommend you know if a church is attached to a cemetery then definitely contact that church even if in like in the case of lincoln because the cemeteries were moved out of the city of harrisburg there was never a church right there that was associated with the cemetery um but you know wesley being the oldest black church in the city you know holds all of those all of those records and used to house the Lincoln Cemetery Association board. So that's why the records are there. Thank and you, again, sir. those records may not be digital. The records that you're getting access to right now are digital because Rachel scanned them yeah, in. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, we have also been working with um, um, Winfields. Oh, good. And um, they have records from Rachel. Help me. Is it the Curtis Funeral Home that they have the records of? Curtis. Um, I think they do. Okay. Yeah, they do. I believe they're supposed to have the Curtis record. Yeah. Okay. And then they do, Curtis I... has oh. records from back at the turn of the century, almost too. 
So we're, we're trying as a genealogy group, but that's why I want you to get our names out there with those leave, leave a flower thing and make sure it says kindred spirits, GWG. You'll see on my example that I have out there how it should look, but um, it, it will be that and your name and then that forget me not flower. And it shows up actually on uh, the memorial. So people will start to hear our name out there and then other people may work with us easier once they see that we're an official group. I would say, Sharon, too, I mean, I'm, I'm not that great at doing it, but um, one thing that you could do too is use like your logo as a flower and people could upload that. Um, and then with the you know blurbs or in the note section you could add a link to the site or say you know something like that i've done it with some of the um soul memorials but not i saw your soul yeah <laughs> yeah our logo is such it's more like a wrap and so ours didn't lend itself well to an image so yeah. that's why i picked the forget me not Questions for Charlotte or Rachel? I have a question. Um, is there a uh, a plot map of this that's going to get posted online to the, to the cemetery on Find a Grave, or is it already there? And then I'll tell you why that's important, because I ran across that with something of mine. Rachel, you do have a plot map for this cemetery, I think. Uh, we, like, the Lincoln Cemetery is... Uh, family plots and so the plot maps show family plot owner names a lot of them but not so not burial not individual burials or graves what is messiah doing uh they're doing something with a gps uh mm -hmm. mapping for lincoln uh so they are working from the headstone perspective. So all of the headstones that are visible in the cemetery have been given, uh, you know, geo coordinates on a map. And then you can, you know, find the names, find the exact location of where that headstone is. And that's where we're at the process right now. In the future, the same information that you'll be working on adding and to find a grave will also be added to that. So even when we're, a headstone is invisible or anything like that, that you'll be able to know where that burial is exactly. Okay. Thanks for that, Rachel. Anyone else? Okay, I don't want to move into the meeting if you have oh. other questions to ask. I wanted to, so uh, okay. is this for, I'm not committing myself because um, my hands are full, but I wanted to know, so because they've been, um, the records have been digitized, digitized. thank you, Rachel, does that mean <laughs> that people that from a distance can participate? Yeah. Yes. Um, we we yeah. welcome participation. Yeah. The only thing is I want to make sure before anyone puts their hands on these records that they have been through our training that you just went through. Um, and if they haven't physically been in this meeting, they're going to have to show me evidence that they either yeah. looked at the video we just made. Somebody needs to mute their mic, please. They either have to look at the video that we just made or the PowerPoint that is posted so that we know that they know what they're doing mm -hmm. uh, because it gets attached to our name and we don't want things to have to be taken down once they're up there. Sharon, did you say there was also a date um, when you would, that we're hoping this first set are done? Yeah, I... I guess what we're hoping is that you will give this a shot. The first folder that I send to you, and please, it will come to you either sometime today or sometime tomorrow. I usually try to get the thank you emails out right away. 
this is not going to be like that. You're going to have to give me a little more time to because you're each going to get an individual folder from me. Some of you will get through the folder, which only has six people in it, remember. Some of you are going to get through that in a few days. And you're going to be sending me an email back saying, here's the six people I did. I was able to complete everybody. Here are the dates that they went up in to find a grave. And I tell you what we're going to do, me and Charlotte and Rachel, we're going to go check you out first. We're going to click on who you had because you you only had those six people. Now, if Rachel goes out there and says, yeah, he's finished, but look at this. This is really questioning what I'm looking at here. Then we're going to have to have a conversation with you before we send you a new folder. But for those of you who just want to give it a, a try, because once you learn how to do this, it will help you in your own personal life, too. I was able to go back and 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 fix things for other family members that I didn't know how to fix before because of going through this process. So um, please try to do it at least within a month. Six people in a month is not a lot to ask. And then if you're done after those six, then just tell us that you're done. At least you have you have that experience under your belt now. I want to oh. add um, that if you find a memorial for your family member that you can request to have control of that memorial and then you can change it on your own pretty much any memorial manager it is find a great policy that you know up to a, i think it's parents grandparents that they have to transfer it to you if you're a disec direct descendant unless they also are a direct descendant so you right so you can request that. I've done that with um, almost all of my family members. A lot of times, obviously, people are volunteering on Find a Grave, and they don't know things about your family like you do. They don't have photos. Um, they're going off of information they find in obituaries, you know, or through genealogical research on ancestry. So, you know, you can always do that. Most people will also transfer memorials um, that are farther out from, you know, just those people. So if that's something that you want to do, then you can go ahead and do that. If there's something you want them to take out of a memorial um, and you have a good reason for them to take it out, they will also do that. Uh, right. But often you won't, like, there's, I have run into problems where someone's like, one person is like, that person was not married to a certain person, but they have a child together and then, you know, or live together. And then somebody else in the family wants you to take that name off. And then it gets a little bit more tricky, right? <laughs> and that's what I was just going to say, be very <laughs> diplomatic with how you word your message to the manager. Uh, start out by thanking them for contributing, you know, to the memorial. They did that as a favor to you as a descendant. Um, but the, the one lady I was saying I got in touch with, Kathy, she has over 2,000 memorials, not just at Lincoln, though. She She's done them all over the place. But she was sure to get back to me and let me know, number one, she's a white lady. And number two, she is not from the Harrisburg area. She was just doing this to be helpful, kind of like a genealogy angel kind of thing. And I started out my message to her by thanking her for her commitment to this. And she got back to me right away because of how it was worded. So please be careful. And like Rachel said, sometimes there are delicate situations where, um, you know, people may be a little abreactive. So just anticipate that. And there was something else I was going to say, too. Um, Sometimes you'll find that somebody had a first or second spouse that other family didn't know about and may not want you to post that in a note or, or something. So, you know, be very careful with things like that. Um, I can't think of anything else right offhand, but any other questions? 
it, it sounds like um, once you upload, maybe family, if let's say uh, you, you switched managers, you said your thank yous, and now you're the manager of your own family members uh, entry. But if you were to um, upload, I mean, um, anyone has access to the information. So it's not, you have to be aware of what you're uploading, you know, because anybody who has access to the website, um, find a grave can view whatever it is that you put in there. Correct. Okay. Correct. Yeah. So, so like li putting information about people that are living is something that you don't want to do because it's just public then. Right. Mm -hmm. So just be, be very careful with that. Um, and, and it's like anything else. Uh, discretion is, um, is, is always a good policy. So if you're not sure if that's going to cause a rift or, or some kind of a problem, just leave it out for now. You can always go back later and, and add something. Charlotte, do you have anything else to say? You did a very good job on your presentation. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for your attention. I'm good. I have two experts here. I can be silent now. <laughs> and Rachel, of course, thank you for everything that you're doing. Um, not just getting the records out there, but and, and to us, but just the boots on the ground attack that you're, you know, <laughs> You and your kids I have are, are. I have one more question for Rachel. Mm -hmm. Okay, I've got two churches I'm working with that my ancestors are buried. One is in Virginia and one is in South Carolina. My question, I guess, is how helpful were the churches? Because I've gone in and nobody knows anything or they don't want to release records. Or what do I have to do? Should I take flowers? <laughs> buy <them> dinner? <laughs> what, what do I have to do to get inside that? Have you been to the churches? Oh, yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And, and, and they're and they're longtime family churches. So my de the descendants, my cousins are still there. I mean, they're still. Mm -hmm. But but you know, a lot of people don't don't care. Number one, you know. Um, but no, these these are my people. They know who I am. I'm you know I'm like third and fourth cousin back, but they know me. They know the family. They know, they know our history. And somewhere this there's this information somewhere, unless it was burned or lost, obviously over the years. Yeah, what I find, um, and with like the black cemetery groups that I'm part of and stuff, is that typically, you know, what's happened is that one person is pretty much responsible for the records um, at a given time. And if that person took the records home and then they died, that they can also be lost that way, or they're in boxes in somebody's attic. Um, people do get really mm -hmm. possessive too about these records. You know, like I'm sure you've run into that in any genealogy research where you know that person in the family has all the family photos and they don't right. want to give up any of them. Yes. You know, yeah. like they don't even want to scan them in and share them. <laughs> and you know, that it's the same with with churches too. And I don't um, there's not a lot of awareness about things like digitization of records or how to go about even doing that either. So that can be part of the possessiveness is that somebody doesn't know how to retain their own copy if they let you have a copy. Gotcha. Okay. Right. Thank you. Thank you so yeah. much for what you do. Thank you. Now, one more thing I forgot to tell you is even though Charlotte and I have 336 records ready to roll out. We are only up to the D's. So there's tons more people to do in the cemetery. And, you know, Charlotte requested additional records from Rachel and we'll work on them as time permits. Um, but, you know, if you guys will help us get the ball rolling, we don't expect you to do everybody in that cemetery, but if we can put a dent in this uh, pile, that, that would be hugely helpful. So say every bit, every little bit, every little bit helps. And absolutely. I mean, people on find a grave that um, a mother and son who devoted, you know, 
a huge chunk of time to adding memorials, mm -hmm. not from burial record cards, but just through obituaries and death certificates. Um, and they added thousands of people. There's well over 10,000 people buried in Lincoln Cemetery. And I think that we're under 5,000 on find a grave now. So we've got a ways to go and whatever you can do to help is greatly appreciated. And I just and want to piggyback on what Sharon said a while mm -hmm. ago, talking about the work that Rachel's done. I went to visit Lincoln Cemetery and I can't even begin to describe how different, how, I mean, it's as if the cemetery, this is going to sound weird, but like the cemetery has come to life. I mean, they've cleaned off the, the memorials uh, or the um, headstones. And so they're bright and, and <laughs> um, I had, I had visited there maybe a year and a half ago and uh, my uncle was buried there and I could not find his, his, um, his grave, his uh, marker anymore. I had seen it before and I couldn't see it. I couldn't find it. And I was just sick. I thought, have people been in here and they, they uh, desecrated the grave? Did they take it? What happened? I didn't know about them sinking under the ground. I was really surprised when I learned that. Anyway, I visited there maybe what a month, two months ago on some really cold weekend <laughs> that Rachel and her family were there working. And they had uh, brought the grave, the grave marker up. So I can tell you that just has meant the world to me. Um, but yeah, the work is, it's really, really impressive. So thank you again, Rachel. Thank you, Charlotte. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Anything else for the good of the order? Yeah, I'm just going to add... Um... Chances are, I'm not going to have any relatives in Lincoln Cemetery. <laughs> but um, I, I, one, I applaud someone for doing this, Rachel and Charlotte, uh, Sharon. I think it's a great project. Uh, but I, I, I look at it as kind of paying it forward. I have used Find a Grave a number of times to find uh, graves all over the world uh, for a number of past generations. So I think it's a, I, I couldn't believe it when I first. I was uh, Googling one of my ancestors and it came up with their actual headstone, which was also for me because I've never seen, Streckawald is a very rare name. I've never seen a headstone with Streckawald on it. So that was kind of uh, interesting. But, um, and then I actually went to uh, a, a grave in Milwaukee where a number of my ancestors were, where the number of the Streckawalds were. And I was easily able to find the plots and it looked just like the picture. So. Uh, this is a great service, um, not just for genealogy, but for anyone interested in their family. I think, and and I ne I hadn't heard about gravestones uh, markers sinking, but yes, that's a terrific thing. I can't imagine how hard it is to pull up a a hunk of rock out of the ground, but uh, yeah, that's why I won't try it either. <laughs> but thank you. And the other thing I was going to say is, um, and you don't have to do this. This is just an optional kind of thing. But it's just uh, me. No, it's not just me, because I know Rachel has done this, too. So I started working on some of these records that were in my folder, and it was so sketchy, the information that was there for these people. I fell down the rabbit hole of going into Ancestry.com, <laughs> Charlotte knows, Ancestry.com and doing some searches on people and found out where they came from, where, what you know, kind of what their story was. You know, Rachel, this will ring a bell for you, but Lake Erie is the lady's name. Yeah, Lake Erie. And her yeah. husband's <laughs> name was Christopher Columbus something or another. But mm -hmm. uh, seriously, I couldn't make this up. But I, I think thought- Lisa Johnson, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> yep. I thought, you know, yeah, they're gonna be Lake easy. Erie Johnson. Mm -hmm. I didn't even know it was a woman. I said, they're going to be easy to find with names like that. No, they weren't. There, I found three Lake Eries and one of them was a man. Okay. But it, it was just very interesting. Anyhow, I did find these two people that passed away in Harrisburg, but this is not where they were from. So if you are so inclined and you want to help tell somebody's story, especially because they didn't have children, and I thought if somebody is looking for them and they find them, they're going to be nieces and nephews. They won't know 
their story. And I just wanted to tell a little of their story. So that's what I did. I wanted, right. to, I wanted to uh, chip in for a minute. I wanted to thank Rachel for all the work that you've done, because as I told Sharon, I have at least five known family members who are in Lincoln Cemetery, and I'm sure there are others. So my hat's off to you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, you can come out. I'm sure there's others. I know like with me that I was, I thought I had just, you know, five or so, and now I'm well above 40. 50 oh, <laughs> mm -hmm. and then and one of our other regular volunteers I told him about Lincoln and he travels from Pittsburgh every month to help out and he was like <clears throat> you know he has over a hundred family members now and he lived in the apartment building for 10 years next that's next to Lincoln Cemetery and never knew it was a black cemetery wow so, yeah yeah mm. <laughs> I, I hate to sound, I, I know you're trying to move it along, but I want to, I, I, I hate to sound um, paranoid and I see the benefits of uh, doing uh, DNA sampling and then, you know, researching family. But I, I sometimes think about, you know, places like, I, I mean, uh, during World War II and um, the, what happened in uh, uh, Congo where uh people can gather your records to kind of identify who you are, your affiliation and, and kill you. And so, you know, um, it's just the way I'm wired to be cautious. And so do you have any concerns about, you know, uh, you know, things don't stay the same, you know, um, creating a direct line of ancestors can be positive for ancestors. It could also be negative if somebody with bad intent towards your family wants to find out, you know, who you are, what your DNA consists of. And so am I the only person that <laughs> worries about such things? No, uh, there are some people in this group that are sensitive about that as well. Um, and certainly if not, anyone sitting in this room right now, we all have family members who are sensitive to that. Um, and some of the um, testing centers really don't share their DNA results with uh, anybody else. Uh, and there are only certain things because of uh, criminal activity that can you know, move forward without consent. So I don't think Ancestry does not ever share anything. And the United States government tried to sue them to get that information and they won. So correct. Yeah. So I think people are really sensitive. Um, and we have someone in the group, Sarah, who does our DNA um, segments now. You know, like I said, I have no problem delegating. Uh, so she now is handling the DNA stuff. And if you have uh, a concern and you want to talk about that, that could be our next topic for the the DNA hour at the end of this month. If you want to talk about DNA testing. As far as it's Lauren, it's Lauren, correct? Yeah, Lauren. Um, yes. As far as like, uh, you know, we had in, I live in Buffalo, New York, and we had a, you know, targeted mass shooting of black people here last year. And I came to Lincoln Cemetery to do restoration the week after that. And, you know, it was, um, I was scared to go anywhere. We'll put it that way, that it, you know, you just don't really have as much closeness to it. We have one supermarket in the historically black neighborhood in Buffalo. Gotcha. Um, seen it on the news and so that this person went there and traveled across the state in order to kill black people and was you know very terrifying and real I went to the cemetery with this sense like this fear that I could be targeted just by being on the cemetery grounds and I'm public on social media like all over the place with right with my with my name but to me it's more important that we get our history back than that I keep my life gotcha I hear you I hear thank you for sharing that 
Thank you, Rachel. Emily, we can stop the recording now. Okie doke. Thank mm -hmm. you.